Hello everyone, this is Tribe Castre, an independent podcast about startup life working in a close cooperation with Tribe Tamper startup community. And my name is Marina. We are continuing Tribecast Summer Tour, therefore let me present to you Pori episode. This week you'll hear the interviews with entrepreneurs Harry Ketamo, Timo Kuro, Harry Sominen and community managers of Crazy Town, Pori, Kati Fager and Petri Linna. This is Tribecast Summer Tour and let's explore Pori startup ecosystem together. When the amazing people of Crazy Town Pori recommended me to talk to him, I had a bit of concern because I'm a really sound person. And when someone says to me that visuals are important, I'm like, really, seriously, why? But still, you are recommended as one of the most interesting startups of uh, Pori. So, hello, Timo. Thank you very much for having time for this interview. And please tell us a few things about yourself before you start to confirm me that visuals are important. <laughs> so, I'm Timo Gura, and I have a company called uh, UC40. Unlimited Creations, and mm-hmm. uh, I started, you know, like, I was at school learning industrial design originally, and then and, and graduated as an industrial designer. After that, I, I didn't find a lot of open jobs that weren't, you know, like design offices that had, you know, like, free places. So I decided to start my own company because my, my dad has always been an entrepreneur. Uh, he's a pho- photographer, so visuals were all, all already, you know, like important to me. I like drawing and 3D stuff, and uh, the industrial design class was mainly focused on 3D modeling right. and, and CAD design and so on. So, and so, but that, that wasn't, you know, like paying too much. They, they didn't want to pay a lot of blood from, you know, like right. just to making web pages. So I, I, because we had learned a lot of these uh, three different 3D programs, they were all were already, you know, like I could do really cool pictures of products. But uh, I, I started moving on to animation from there because I, the, you know, like if you have a product, it picture is not telling you that much it's just you know like a cool picture but if when, once you get it moving and, and you get you know like immersive view of the product i really like to show stuff moving and not just you know like still images so and then that was you know like people weren't you know like doing that much animation then the tools weren't that good because it was like over 10 years ago mm-hmm. <laughs> so I started doing those. Then my dad, who is a photographer, I told him that uh, he should do video because they need a visual presentation of the actual product and not just a 3D model. If it's, you know, like a product that's already made, it's better to have the actual product and maybe present some aspect of it in 3D that can't be catched in film. Like if we have a, a copper melting pot <laughs> you can't actually show what's happening inside it, of the pot when it's melting the copper yeah. so that's done in 3d animation and so we combined the you know like the video that's presenting like factories uh-huh. and and so on and then we show what can't be filmed in in 3d that's what the companies actually really need then after that, I started the rendering stuff. Was back then it was really a slow process because I didn't have infinite amount of money to buy huge computers that can process the animations like Pixar or something. And it right. just you know, used a couple of computers to render those. And after it, it was like uh, I can't remember. It was like three or four years ago. Unreal Engine became uh, free to use. Mm-hmm. So. And the the visuals already at that point were quite amazing on you know like real time graphics. It was I thought that why would I use physically based rendering that takes a lot of time and just fake it if it you <laughs> it looks almost the same. So I started using Unreal Engine and real time graphics, and and I could expand on not just showing animation, but also you know like doing it in real time so you could move move while the animation is playing you could you know like have a different point of view or something that, that was you know like the next step on that thing and and now i decided to develop a basis on uh, on top of unreal engine where we can have animation 
a VR experience and everything just by, you know, like putting in, in the product and it's already capable of doing everything you need. So now if we have a product, we can just put it in, code the actual, you know, like what is... Measurements? Well, we can have the actual 3D model from the client usually because mm-hmm. they, they're using the 3D model for uh, actually doing the molds or anything. They, re- they mm-hmm. already need a really high detail model usually. But if there's like flaps opening or, or we need to see inside, that needs to be, you know, like adjusted to the model. And after that is done, we can already have a, a virtual experience from the product. And now we're moving forward to like we could have education uh, people can learn to use the actual product because if it's already there, we have the animations that can be used for marketing. We could just do a couple of things over on top of it, and then we have a working model that, for example, if you have a, a factory, mm-hmm. it's not even built. We have already the, the 3D model. We can send people inside the virtual model before the actual structure is even built. We, we, they don't have the the factory ready they're building it but we have the 3d model so people can learn how to operate inside the factory and when once the actual building is done they already know what to do and they know where the all the safety measures are and, and saving money it's right that's yeah. that's a little bit like a hologram yeah what's the difference between a hologram, a hologram is like 3D model. usually it's like light and and how the you have different kind of holograms it's People use the word hologram as uh, like Microsoft. I don't know if you have seen Microsoft's uh, this uh, HoloLens. Mm-hmm. They're using the word like holo- hologram or something. Mm-hmm. Even if it's like it's uh, light drawing the image on uh, a tilted plane that's in front of your eyes, and then you see through it. And they use the word hologram on it. But it's the actual uh, holograms are like. Like you can have a 2D picture, you know, the, like the old uh-huh. old holograms. So that's a bit different. It's not quite a, a hologram. It's like VR is you're uh, closed inside the actual 3D world, and then you have AR, which is augmented reality that uses this, like like Microsoft's uh, Hololens. They use they draw 3D stuff on top of the real world. We both wear glasses. So, yeah, it's, so it's, 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 it was like. We both wear glasses, yeah, yeah, so yeah, let, yeah. let's talk so, about glasses. That's something I understand. <laughs> yeah. So if you you know, you know like Google is doing Google Glass, mm-hmm. they have this you know like little thing that shows stuff on on the edge of your view. They're representing stuff there. But once you get the, your you know like you have normal glasses and you can project three D stuff into our eyesight then it becomes, you know, like better because you can, for example, show a 3D model of, of a factory on the top of our, you know, like table mm-hmm. and turn it around and, and everyone can see with the classes and then st- they still can, you know, like see each other and, and uh, you don't lose the contact on your customer. Okay. Okay. That's the future. And that's, uh, that's part of, you know, like why I started using game engines because their uh, game in the industry itself is developing faster than anything at the moment because movie industry is not even close anymore. Game industry is is way ahead of everything. And then because so many people are using games for different stuff, then Mm -hmm. if you're developing a new product, let's say like AR glasses or VR glasses, of course you want to use it in gaming industry because you have so many people testing it out and you can, you know, like fine tune the product because you have uh, masses of people using your product and it's interesting. People like to use experiment in, in games. Mm-hmm. So I think that's why it's a great platform. It has a lot of money in it and, and a lot of people. So that's why it's the one thing that's moving technology forward at the moment because like screens also gamers want faster you know like refresh rates on modern monitors more resolution so and now like tv tv was the one that was you know like making better screens than its cell phones and then now everyone has a cell phone screens are you know like made for cell phones and now people are starting to just play on their cell phones no 
then they need you know like faster refresh rates like mm-hmm. the one plus seven pro now has 90 hertz display it looks even if you're not gaming on it it looks faster the, the phone itself looks okay. faster so everything you know like involved around it is making technology move faster and forward Right. I have one a bit of off-topic question yeah, because yeah. there was the max information about technology I heard in many years. Yeah. It's like the compressed course of all my school knowledge of technology <laughs> combined with the university and life after. When I went to your webpage, your company's webpage, yeah. I had a basic problem. How do you read your name <laughs> and what does it actually mean? It's, it was like, a, you know, like you see in 3D, 3D no? vision. Oh, okay. You see okay. 3D, but you actually see 4D because you see three dimensions and time, so that's four, di- four dimensions. Okay. You see in four dimensions. Okay. <laughs> and I unlimited think... creations was just like we didn't want to have... A limited creation. Yeah, yeah, because we don't have want to specify that we're just doing like graphics or because we don't know where the technology is going. So, All right. Yeah. Do you consider yourself a startup? I'm not sure. You know, like I, I told... I, like 10 years of background in animation and doing uh-huh. doing this stuff i needed to combine forces with someone who knows how to operate in in the server side of things mm-hmm. i'm doing the visuals and then i like to do the coding and mm-hmm. so i'm realizing that but the business associate villa is doing the actual coding and because we need servers we want to have the game updated to our customers mm-hmm. so we, we need some kind of an interface where mm-hmm. they can you know register and and log in and manage the installations and so on mm-hmm. so that was really needed and then we combined our forces and that's our new company so that we started a bit over a year ago we have one guy that's doing the 3d modeling now so mm-hmm. i was well i was working alone so i did everything i did 3d modeling and 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 coding and 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 animation but but now i can you know like come up with new ideas Mm -hmm. better to focus on on uh, you know like if someone else can do likes to do 3d modeling it's better to have someone do it and and i i can focus on on bringing up new ideas okay coding yeah so uh, i guess i ran out of questions for today and we're a bit over time but thank you very much for this interview (laughs) that was one of the most interesting lectures on technology for me (laughs) i'll go through it again and probably start understanding something about what you guys do there thank you very much for this interview i wish you lots of cool ideas coming and good luck with your startup and as an early stage startup i think that the perfect place for you to go this autumn or one of the perfect places will be Stream Startup Festival in October in Tampere, okay. which is targeted at early stage startups. And probably you'll meet, at least you'll get more interesting ideas from there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah right. I, I'm always in, interested in meeting new people. That's why I'm, you know, like hanging out on this Swami Arena and every place else. So thanks. So yeah, it's Tribecast Summer Tour episode Pori. Uh, my second guest for this week is Harry whom I should first of all say a great thank you for replying to messages 8 in the evening. <laughs> thank you very much for having time for this interview and thank you very much for a quick reply and being able to do that today. Yeah, and thanks for inviting me to this. Actually, I invited you because when I saw your name in the list of participants in the Pori Future Launch, I went through your CV, or like official one, and I was fascinated how many things you did. You've been here and there, participating, learning, working, investing, being an entrepreneur. So let's start from the very beginning. Tell our listeners a few things about yourself. Yeah, maybe we start. I'm originally a crafts teacher, so I started to study theoretical physics, but finally find myself graduating as a crafts teacher. So including mathematics and, and the natural science, but crafts. And really enjoyed that work. I did that for a couple of years. So teaching crafts from kindergarten to upper secondary school, basically. But somehow, for some reason, I got more interested on research, science. There were that much interesting stuff in the world that I just had to go for research. And so I started to do my licentiate first in, in educational psychology, and then I did my PhD on complex adaptive systems. Nowadays, it would be called AI, but at that time in 2000, AI was not the allowed word. Because at the 80s, there was a AI winter, meaning that the first boom of AI was in, in 80s. And at that time, there were two big promises that couldn't be fulfilled. And so 
AI was not okay word to use in 